Now we're going to start off uh, just quickly. We're going to have a quick break. We're going to go into um, a little campaign just to show you a video um, in reference to World Suicide Prevention Day. I usually catch up with my friends in person and it's much easier to pick up on well-being cues when you're actually there with them. But now with COVID, obviously we can't. So with ION, I can check in with my friends, see how they're really doing. And ION gives me a quick visual snapshot of how my loved ones are actually doing. So I can stay more connected with them even through COVID times. The uniqueness of ION is that it creates a safe space to be able to check in on the areas of your life or work that matter most. So if you can initiate an ION with your friends, family, peers, it's gonna help you be a better friend. In a time like this, when mental health is so important, being able to check in on your mates, that's something extremely close to my heart. So IR makes life easier. With Are You OK Day, it's crucial for you to be vulnerable with your mates, and iYarn helps you do that. The app is free, and it's easy to download from the App Store. Right now, there's a free check-in online to help you get started. What we're doing, the next conversation would be based around this iYarn app. So this iYarn app was actually made, created by a young man named Lockie Cook. And here he is right now. And of course, um, yeah, Lockie has actually been, he's the founder of Ayan and also ICEA, um, which is a, uh, a camp, camp, well, we'll talk about that later soon with you. Um, but in regards to your connections, who you're working with, I wanted to introduce uh, Mr. Dwesman Wigan Dan. He works for the Department of Community in Kananara. And um, hopefully he's still here. And if not, that's okay. We've still got Lockie to speak on his behalf. Dwayze, you can say good day, mate. Dwayze, say good day. Hi, everybody. Oh, Hi, you got Tamara. <laughs> Yay! So good. So, Dwayze, I don't know if you know, maybe you do, but um, my my mother used to hang out with your father years yeah. ago. <laughs> and there's a funny uh, picture of them. They're all sitting down in a pretty pool and yarning up. And it's just the ultimate picture back in the old 70s, you know? Um, yeah. yeah, there's a bit of history. And you were actually family. So, yeah, good to see you. So good. Um, but yeah, let us know more, Lockie, about what this app is and to, I guess, discuss the connections between you and Dwesman. Yeah, well, thanks a lot for having me on and and, uh, and Dwes to share the story of Ion. Um, I want to be respectful of Dwes in his time. He's got to probably run off to, to work soon. So I might sort of to Dwes to give a bit more context. But long story short, for me, um, I went up to Adiulun for the first time in 2005. So 15 years ago when I was 15 years of age on a school leadership camp. There's a little uh, Gadia white fella kid up there, went on a um, indigenous leadership camp with an uh, indigenous run organization up there in the Kimberley that's really well respected called Gandua. And I'm not sure a few crew, most people in the Kimberley know Gandua. It's been around for years. And a guy, Mick Albert, really took me under his ring and guided me a lot with that. And over that journey, I learned, saw a big gap between me as a privileged white kid growing up in Perth. and. A lot of these epic mates I had um, out on country, making spears, catching mud crabs. And, but then we drove through the community. I saw there's a big difference between our schools. And essentially, that's where we set up the ICEA Foundation, which is all about enhancing educational facilities and resources initially. And then over time, it evolved into being a reconciliation organisation. And part of that journey, I'll share a bit more, but um, I got really connected with the Barty Bob. And Dwez is a Barty man and uh, yes. brother to me. Dwez, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Dwez, and obviously I'm from One Arm Point community where I first met Lockie when he was 15. So we're both, Lockie sort of came into our community, like you said, and got um, and, you know, got culturally adopted through a lengthy process and time. And, you know, he's, I don't look at him as a guardia anymore. I look at him as family and blood. And yeah, that's how sort of our connection started. And you know, we've been on a on this life journey together and always checking in with one in with one another so yeah, <laughs> yeah that's important isn't it i think that uh, that connection as well knowing that you've known each other for several years to to gain the rapport eventually and there's this template that we've all worked with which is um for your leon so it's connection to spirit country and to yourself or, or i guess your your spiritual connection to others and and certain places um and this template you've actually discussed with Ayan as well was sort of like a, I guess, uh, what an inspiration for you, wasn't it? Yeah, man. So it's way back um, uh, when I kind of got that name Binjali passed to me by the matriarch of the Ejai family, Bessie Ejai, um, back that would have been probably 20, 2010, 2011. 
um, all of a sudden that was a real, when I went, started going deep into learning more about body culture. And one of the big words was learning about Leon. And obviously there's so much more that I, you know, not being initiated that I don't know about body culture, but learning about that Leon is a real powerful way for me to bridge that gap between, you know, this, all this upbringing I hadn't had with the body culture. And, um, you know, a big one speaking to many, Trevor Sampy, Kevin George, and then Nolan Hunter, and a bunch of other crew in town, or Kevin EJ, about this word, um, Leon, I started understanding it more. And then, you know, people used to start, oh, Binjali, Gurna Leon, how's your Leon? And um, essentially, you know, I, as a typical kind of Westerner, growing up in the city, people go, oh, how are you going? And you go, yeah, I'm good, I'm good, I've got to go now, catch ya. You know, and um, it wasn't until my mum, my adopted mum, Donna Edgar, EJ now, she goes, oh, and she growled at me. She growled at me and goes, Lockie, if anyone asks you, How's your Leon? It's, you know, you've got to be honest with them at that moment, you know, because this is a safe space. They love you enough to ask that. They care for you. And this is a safe space to do that. So, you know, share what's going on. Do you have a heavy Leon or a light Leon? And um, in that moment, I realized, wow, how, and like, you know, it's really, if I'm not truly willing to be open and honest in that moment, it's disrespecting my family, my culture, the community that's embraced me with open arms, if I'm not truly respecting that word and sharing how I'm going. Do I have a heavy Leon or a light Leon? And that's kind of, I was like, wow, how powerful would it be to create something with that similar concept of one word that can be a hook? to creating a safe space and rather, you know, not you ripping off the Leon word or anything like that. It's creating this new word called I yarn. Let's have a yarn. Let's have an I yarn yarn. And um, so then it's like for a lot of everyone, young Australians, all backgrounds to come together and maybe have an I yarn yarn, which kind of shows, you know, how they're going. Yeah. It's integral, isn't it? It's so important that we make sure we are, are touching on base and how we're feeling. I think, um, Joyceman, for you to know that you actually got a chance to collaborate with uh, such an incredible entrepreneur, I think, you know, knowing yourself too, because that's what you do. I've known you for a few years and how you're, you know, how you really try to make sure that Mob are looked after, specifically um, from, you know, a community perspective um, and, and representation. Um, you also identify as um, LGBTI. And I guess that whole idea of knowing that there's this empowerment of what you're doing in communities. But how does it feel connecting with, um, I guess, something of uh, the idea of Ayan connection to Leon, like in regards to your protocol connection? What did, what did you have to do in, in the process of creating this? I think um, Lockie touched on it quite a bit. Uh, I think for me, it was marrying, they, they, they actually married together quite well. Um, and in the context of the fact that, you know, we as Aboriginal people, we evolve all the time. And I think our cultures cannot remain stagnant. They need to evolve with the people. And I feel, you know, we have that founding, you know, uh, word, which is Leon, which actually describes our moral and emotional compass um, up here. But Ian is actually a platform I see that young people can engage quite well in, in regards to having deep and meaningful conversations about their life and what's actually impacting them right then and there. I think you touched, so, sorry, you touched on it and you said, you know, it's not about prevention, it's about healing. So I look at this tool as a, as a, as a medium and as a tool to heal and to have those conversations that normally we wouldn't get to have. Um, you know, you coming from the Kimberley area as well as me, it's always been like, what now? Um, and what now is almost like a dead conversation. It's like, like, oh, so what are you doing? You know, kind of thing. And, it just ends <laughs> there. and I feel like with um, I on the platform, it, it's, 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 technology, it's technology that we can use to actually ask each other and really prioritize what's meaningful to me as Duez right now. I have that tool that I can then share with somebody like Lockie. Lockie and I were quite blessed last night. We actually had an eye on um, catch up. So I, you know, scaled from one to 10, what was, you know, the top 10 things that was important to me. And on that, you know, scale of one to 10, where was I at that point in time right then and there? Um, and so looking back at how, when you're looking at uh, conversations and how we can actually craft up quite meaningful conversations with one another, um, this app actually provided that opportunity for me to be quite honest and with myself, but also with those people that I feel are important in my life, like, you know, Lockie is one of those people. Um, so we were actually able to have the conversations that normally we probably wouldn't get to have if I was just to check in and say, hey, what's up? So for me, I feel that the marriage between the, um, you know, our, our cultural knowledge around Leon 
and how iron has sort of you know adapted into a, a you know a tool that younger generations can use now is quite useful yeah great I, I, I also love the fact that this iPad, um, Ion app actually has a progression state to it where it continually shows a timeline in regards to what you're doing from the previous to, uh, to today. Um, so if we can go through this, that'd be awesome. Uh, just discuss more, Lockie, about how it all works. So essentially, I'm just sharing a bit of a screen now if anyone's listening on audio, but um, I just, I've got a bit of a dashboard for our company that we have. Um, and essentially what you can do, so imagine Dwez and I actually have our own private one. I'm not going to share where's in mind um, in this call because you know they're quite personal um, we're quite we we're quite open to share about this stuff but sometimes Dwez and I go real deep about some stuff <laughs> so Dwez um, you know check in check in for example he could choose a private or public but a private one for friends is that and then you could just choose the segments you want to check in on so you could go you know maybe work you go mental health um, friends you know sleep and maybe even customer I could go body you know culture you know for example, these are maybe some seg uh, seg segments. Dwez, would you want to add anything? This is just for demo, but would you, you happy with that? Yeah, happy with that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and then you kind of go through and essentially what you could do, you go What here. about romance? Come oh. on, Dwez, must be a bit of romance in there, surely. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we, we could, we just keep on going. And then you can choose the description. So like, are you feeling good, more than bad most of the time? So you can actually customize this however you want to do a check-in. And so the power of this is like, it literally takes 30 seconds to create one. And you could go like friend, you know, are you being a supportive friend? Blah, 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 and you can go through as deep as you want and you kind of create it. And then all of a sudden it's in your dashboard and then you can do complete a check in here. And then you can choose where, where, where are you at with body culture? you like connected with culture. You could have here, am I connecting with my elders with my family and friends, you know, on a regular ongoing basis. And you're going like, not very much recently, a little bit, but not heaps. But then up here would be like awesome. So you go through and you give yourself, a bit of a score. I'm just making a bit of bogus data right now. Maybe Dwez is probably not sleeping. Mardi Gras was last weekend, probably not sleeping. So <laughs> <laughs> um, work is probably low because of Mardi Gras, but then friends are really high because I was at Mardi Gras. No, I'm kidding. So then we got all these different <laughs> things. And then, and then also Dwez could be like, oh, you know, I was at Mardi Gras, you know, uh, it, it, grass last you know weekend in in knx whatever and then See, now we're talking about not going personal now you've just gone all personal again um so yeah so you can you can put it use it a bit of a journal and then complete and then all of a sudden i go oh you know dwez will share this yarn with me over phone you can literally save it as a jpeg or and do it that way and send it to him whatsapp or whatever and then i can see this and they go, oh, champ, oh, it's good. These friends are good body culture and mental health. That's all sweet. But then actually, oh, that's interesting that that's low and that's a bit low and that. Okay, interesting. And then maybe, you know, we can have more of a yarn about that. So I know when I get on the phone with Dwez, I can see kind of where he's at. He's giving himself an average of the areas of life of 5.7. Um, but now, but then imagine, you know, all of a sudden a week's time, Dwez and I have another call and all of a sudden he's had a rest for weekend and all of a sudden everything's up here. And he's actually going champ. And, and, and then so I can actually see that everything's kind of gone up in the last since from first check into the next one. And then this can help me be a better friend to Dwez and mm. vice versa. And the big thing with this is around being vulnerable with each other. You know, it's not about, oh, look at me. I'm an eight for everything. Oh, I'm so good. I'm so great. It's actually, you know, being really thinking deep to yourself. And, you know, is this truly like sometimes when people do a seven, we kind of say seven's a bit of an in-between number. Would it be an eight or would it more likely be a six? Because a lot of people, when they're cruising through, they'll give themselves a seven. It's not that amazing, but it's not also that bad. So you may actually want to go deeper in that conversation with the mate. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how, uh, how it can be used in a real practical sense and do that. And right here, it's just really interesting. We've got this um, report. This is the... In, um, the are you okay public check-in that we've created. So this has been completed by a bunch of people and this is the average of everyone who's done a check-in. So in the show notes, they can click on this and complete the are you okay ion check-in. And uh, we, it's all de-identified and anonymous, but it's a quick way that you can do a quick assessment with where you're going with you know, some areas of life that you could do. If you don't know where to start, this is a cool way to start to do a check-in with yourself. Such an incredible platform in regards to Specifically, those individuals who don't, um, who aren't, who are struggling to speak for themselves. 
And this gives them more of a visual context of where they're coming from and, and it allows people to understand how they are, I guess. Um, not completely, but it gives something to offer. And um, that's what I really love about this. And I really do. And, um, uh, you know, it's been amazing going back to the connection with me and the Bardi mob. It's like, you know, my life is so enriched from connecting to country. You know, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I, my, my, you know, ancestors have been, um, you know, farming on this country for six generations. And, um, but this connection I have with country through Bardi mob has been such a, a life enricher for me. Um, you know, it's interesting just sharing the experience. Um, you know, I got a bit, I got, a bit upset before. And I think it's also Siri to mention like, you know, some of these stories can actually trigger some people to actually acknowledge that these, you know, helplines that people can call lifeline and things like that. Um, you know, Dwez and I and community, as I know everyone has, you know, we've had these um, devastating uh, experiences in community with young people who, you know, think that that suicide is the only, only option. And um, that's where I kind of, we had a, in the community a few years ago, and I felt so helpless. And these kids I've seen, I've grown up with them for 10 years. And then that was the path I felt like could take, um, you know, and I wanted to be, how do I connect and try to offer something that can, you know, maybe save a life if, you know, because I was finding a lot when I'm living on the other side of the country and I go, oh, how are you going? People go, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. I'm good. And then that's it. But if I can send them something and say, hey, be honest with me, share with where you're at, scroll it from zero to 10, then that truly kind of can show me with how they're going. And then I can be better informed to have more of a proper yarn and conversation with them to truly be there for the people I love. Definitely. Um, for those who, yeah, who feel like sometimes it gets heavy, it gets hard. No, there is someone out there always for you. And the, there is a number you can call on Lifeline, which is one three double one one four. That's one three double one one four. Um, they will always keep everything confidential and know that they've, they've got you. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for the insight into the IYARN. Um, Joesman, I know you have to head off soon, but um, I guess just in regards to what you're doing now in your community and how, um, and has this app actually been helping a lot of mob um, with, uh, I guess, what you're working on? I think uh, for myself, um, well, in regards to my work, I think we've done, you know, there's so much more we can do, um, but there's, you know, I think, this education around what's available to community is probably the best way to start. And I feel, you know, we've gone down this road lock in, in regards to how best we test this to really contextualize the tool to our community utilize something like this. Um, it's been a long road and we're getting there. And I feel, you know, once we actually have that direct involvement with a lot of you know people downloading this app and actually putting it on their phone and using it i feel the tool is only as good as the people that use it so i feel the more we actually promote something like this is actually the way we can actually generate some kind of um sense of how important it is but also how useful it is actually to support young people that might be dealing with issues and also around communicating that in a non-judgmental way that's not intimidating because you're not sitting in a council room this is something that you it's up to you to be honest with yourself and those that you feel most connected and safe with that you can have that conversation. So I feel that, you know, we're down that road already and it's how do we sort of promote something like this as a tool that can be used. Thank you, Joyce. Unfortunately, we had a bit of reception issues and um, we did get the gist of what you're saying mostly. Um, yeah. I think, you know, with everything that's happening uh, specifically for mob, you know, it's, it's slowly but surely, I think we're getting more awareness in regards to how we can look after one another um, and using extra things as such as the app um, has just given yeah. us an, that extra bit of, you know, I guess, um, strengths in what we can what we can do for mob. Um, but yeah, just really ad admiring both your work, you guys, and keep up and keep, keep it up. It's incredible. Thank you. Thank so you. feel free to hang yeah, around if you, you. like. Uh, Lockie, yeah. in regards 